We're back with the 10th official episode of Ryan Multiverse, adding in the Neo Reality Rights segment of the YouTube channel. And this time for the 10th episode, let's talk about once more the Wyatt family and more specifically the Eight of Worlds, Bray Wyatt. So when we last left off, we were talking about some plans about what I was planning to do for the Multiverse series regarding Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family as a whole. I want to discuss this and go deeper into the Bray Wyatt character that's in my story you see um after some changes have come along since bray wyatt since i talked about that video so this is the dissolution of the wyatt family again the deleter of world stuff him being WWE champion and to his current gimmick which is freaking awesome and i'm not just making this video not only to talk about the bray wyatt character but also to praise the firefly funhouse because that would be ridiculous even though it is phenomenal so anyways um, so the new plans have been made since then, and while there are still some plans that from that first chapter is currently being discussed about, um, there is another plan in place to have, basically, I'm planning to do this, this very crazy idea with Bray Wyatt, where I have him siphon the force from the, the solo siblings, you know, Jaina, Jason, and Anakin, the midichlorians he has force powers and then some other plans started developing later down the road where not only does he have the force he later goes ahead and acquires the helmet of naboo you know dr fate and kills zatara zatana's father since i am incorporating young justice and all that so yeah th that's gonna be dark and then i have him eventually plan to go challenging raiden the god of thunder from the mortal combat universe in a mortal combat fight so there's that and then I was like, okay, how do I make this character even bigger and crazier? Okay, I have him kill Cinder from Ruby's universe be right before she, she, she kills Pura, so Pura's saved. And then later down the road, he fights, um, he's planned to fight Avatar Korra from the Legend of Korra series. And that happened. Then we get even crazier and crazier, and now I've been lately coming up with this idea to have him kill Superman. Yeah, I'm basically making Bray Wyatt overly powered and overly crazy because I lo freaking love the Bray Wyatt character and really wished he'd be used to his full potential in WWE, which hopefully is now being done thanks to Triple H, Undertaker, and Wyatt working together and Vince McMahon having no involvement whatsoever in this project. So, yeah. And... Yeah, so anyways... Now, like, new plans have been developing ever since then. Like, I was always debating about what to do with the S.H.I.E.L.D., Wyatt family, and Bray Wyatt especially. Like, originally I was planning to kill them off in book three near the end. But now it's like, no, I feel like they could... Like, I filled these guys up so much. To kill them off in book three near the end of the war would kind of be disservicing to them. In fact, I thought of something better. I'm going to have them be their their own have their own storyline and be the main antagonist of this fourth book. So, book 4 is penned to be the Resurrection Crisis where in the aftermath of the war a year-long period has passed and Bray Wyatt has been developing something in the has been up to a directive he reveals to certain characters about how he's been ordered by Emperor Eric to, in the event that he dies, that he becomes resurrected. He gets resurrected by Bray Wyatt and the others in this big epic plan to to end the to bring about the return of the Emperor in a time of various degrees of turmoil in the galaxy in the aftermath of the Great Universal War. So he decides. So it's revealed, and this is a new idea I came up with about a year ago. With about a year or so ago, I think I came up with the idea when Mortal Kombat 11 came out where Eric has this unique powerful device that he crafted called a multiversal spear I'm trying to come up with a name here but um this spear would have contained a realm of all these paradoxes timeline alterations created by Eric that allows him to generate enough power and energy to merge the multiverse into one colossal universe so Bray Wyatt, after the end of the war, gets a hold of it to prepare to use it because it could be used to resurrect Eric. However, this in turn creates a massive crisis. As in, uh, 
there's going to be a massive bleeding effect that's causing repercussions and and ripping in time throughout the multiverse especially the multiverse galaxy uni universe yeah it's gonna get complicated when i talk about that layer stuff and the idea here is to have bray wyatt later down the road become more and more corrupted as his cloning body is developed because it's going to be revealed that bray wyatt and the shield and the wyatt family they're all clones of the original and been fed an education like say superboy back in the young justice series when when they had the genomorph mini creatures feed an education to his head but like yeah that's going to be their origin story they're not going to be the real bray wyatt or the wyatt family or the shield but they will the real act the real wrestlers who played those characters yeah their lives are kind of in the wreck because they have to reinvent themselves as new wrestlers because they can't use those wrestler names anymore because of the circumstances surrounding the shield and wyatt family during the war so yeah that's problematic for them in fact that almost collapses the wrestling industry because so many of the wrestlers were in this series that it almost led to the destruction of the universe to, to a major extent yeah so yeah anyways moving on from that <laughs> so bray wyatt does eventually utilize the device but however it creates this bling effect like i've mentioned where it creates this wreck where it starts to alter the timeline a bit not like majorly like add stuff that was not supposed to be there and altering their mind's history but still maintain the mind they had when they were fighting the multiverse series so far up to that point but like there would be retcons to an extent that like okay so as you recall i had a podcast in my first ever neo reality podcast episode uh with hf we were talking about fan fictions and all that well i had been t discussing with him about this idea where i plan to bring in the recidivist au into the ruby canon and basically create this alteration of bringing the recidivist characters into the multiverse series and bray Wyatt would be the reason why this happened and one of the characters in this is somnus a character i created who tragically died in the in near the end of act three uh spoilers <laughs> too late um so he's resurrected in this in the first testing of the spear and this leads to him contact trying to get trying to get a hold of ruby and the others to warn them of the coming danger and somehow getting more aware of stuff that he probably shouldn't know like the universalists i'll get to them when i when i do and yeah this is causing all this fluctuations in time and yeah basically all reality is in danger and certain party factions are trying to see if they can get to this sphere because well, let's be honest who wouldn't be tempted to have the sphere that could control all or all, all of reality and the multiverse itself like various factions would want to get that especially a secret military faction in the Uni united nations space command group called oni yeah spoilers they're gonna have a role in this and their shadiness is gonna come to light more so so yeah moving on um so this leads to bray wyatt having to acquire quote ingredients needed to bring about the resurrection of, of the emperor and this involves kidnapping killing and torture and other forms of grotesque violence and high psychological warfare and when i saw the firefly funhouse that gave me the idea of okay let's incorporate that into the story where this would be bray wyatt's quote true form his ultimate form because bray wyatt undergoes several transformations in this not like in dragon ball z more like he changes himself to reflect his new outlook on things and one of the transformations i have him planned to do is after the joker is killed in my story i'm not kidding um bray wyatt does this transformation to himself where he where his where okay remember in that walking phoenix teaser makeup trailer scene we got where the music's playing i should laugh but i cry you took me by surprise I didn't realize that you were laughing. Yeah, basically we're going to have that where Bray Wyatt is just standing, smiling, and then all of a sudden he's wearing Joker-like makeup on him. 
and he's basically becoming the new Joker for the Empire, and then it just gets crazy and crazier there from there, where then he starts to do the Firefly Funhouse thing in Book Four, in the aftermath of the war, and like then when it comes to this final battle, you see the various transformations Bray Wyatt put himself through to eventually become these this ultimate form of him when he's when he show when he reveals his quote true self in the uh firefly unhouse episode four segment and that's gonna lead to some me very messed up things later down the road and it, it's gonna get crazy I, I just know that in my mind in, in my heart i know that's crazy because i want to give this character so many new layers that i felt like wwe could have done in their wrestling context whereas i'm doing it in a more outlandish context but still trying to respect the character but yeah so yeah we're embracing the wyatt mr rogers attitude from the firefly fun house we're giving him a bit of the joker in him and now why is going to be the uh, be the one of the main central antagonists of this main story of book four that ends the emperor eric saga and after that, that's when I finally decide I'm going to pull the plug on his character, kill him off, because after that, there's really no other story left to tell with him, in a way, because he's fulfilled his directive in his eyes, he has nothing left going for him, like, he'd be just in the background if I kept him around, and plus there's already Windham Rotunda running around in the resurrected humanity, so really, I can't do that. But one of the key components I'm loving about this is the fact that I'm writing this character. I'm, I'm having a spin on this character that I, that I like to do. And it, it's pretty amazing for me. Like, it's just amazing. Like, I, I have him start out just being a wrestler. And then I have him grow into his own character where he's fight, fighting in the war. He's go, he's doing things that are deemed crazy. That even beyond normal recognition should be called into question. He's using psychological torture and manipulation tactics. He's leading invasions even. And, yeah. And... There's also another plan where I have probably have him gather the the elements of of the Ruby Universe's maidens, the powers, and absorbs them into his lantern because he's a male and therefore can't have those powers because of, because it all seems to go to females. Yeah, I still don't get that law they made, but yeah, the idea here is to have him put him in a lantern that lantern of his, where he'll use its power from there. So, yeah, basically, I'm having, and one of the proposed covers for book four that I, that I come up with a rough sketch for is basically like Coronica from Mortal Kombat where in the trailer where she's having her hand out and holding onto the, onto the time, onto the sands of time, um, hourglass. So it's like that, but with Bray Wyatt and holding and touching the sphere as it activates. And then looks towards the quote camera with his sif colored eyes because he, his body is becoming more and more corrupted. Because one of the proposed plans for the one year later arc in my book four story is to have Bray Wyatt at the end of the chapters for each character I focus on to do a mission while he's away, while he's away from the known public galaxy, where he's withdrawn from himself from public life doing this directive he's been given where he and the shield and the Y family are out and members of the empire trying to finish the trying to bring back their lost emperor where eventually you under where you start to see more of him his body decaying and then he gets another body and then his body starts to erode more because whereas his body because his clone body when he got it was didn't have all these powers all these different abilities so when he lost so when he died and his and his powers eventually mixed with his dna it eventually transferred into the next host however whereas before he had time to get these to adapt to these powers it's like the case of Gam of a nebula in the infinity gauntlet comic where thanos where thanos had collected them all one by one and got used to their powers before fully completing it Nebula got it all at once, and considering her mental state at the time, that led to horrible disasters looming. That's basically the same case for Wyatt, except whereas he's not going crazy with power, his body's just not adapting as it could to the powers he held during his original host. 
during his original body. So yeah, I'm mixing or incorporating the elements of Dark Empire with Palpatine, where he starts his body starts to decay as well. So that's my ultimate end goal for Bray Wyatt to be on this race against time. But eventually it's going to lead to this kind of phenomenal moment where Wyatt, near the end of this, when he's finally having this final battle, and this is the end for him, where he ends up going ahead and show and revealing all his different transformation gimmicks and transformations he's been in and ultimately forms into the ultimate Wyatt form he's in where you see the Firefly Funhouse Joker as death of the family mask and the dreadlocks and everything. Like it's just trying to trying to evolve Bray Wyatt's character in the multiverse series and give him this big finale for his character and the shield. And the Wyatt family because that because book four is going to be their permanent kill off date, so that's so those so those eight oh wait seven are basically playing for keeps. So if they don't succeed in this plot to resurrect the Emperor, that's it. They're done for. So yeah, it's gonna be fun when I get to writing book four when I especially write write the story among those guys. But yeah, it's gonna be crazy and chaotic. I'll give you that. And I'm just, I just really enjoy writing the Bray Wyatt character. It's just been so fun writing his character in my stories. It's fun. It's entertaining to me. It's, it's giving some new perspectives to this character. Trying to find a way to write in his style to make it still feel like it's the Bray Wyatt character that everyone's familiar with, but also be take its own spin and take its own life form. So yeah, this was the 10th episode of Neo Reality and Rights. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. Stay tuned for more, and I hope you enjoyed all this. Oh, your cares away. Oh, your cares away.